You're watching The Randy and Krista Show. I'm Randy Alvarez. I'm Krista Recchio, and this is news that makes you healthier. Today we're talking about mindset, and we're going deep into mindset with performance coach Derek Robbins, son of Tony Robbins. I know you're excited about this because you walked on fire and you I've did been, a lot well, of I've been Tony dying Robbins to meet this stuff. guy for a long time. Mm -hmm. You know, I saw him many years ago, and he was kind of chubby. Mm. And now this guy is fit. He's lean. He's one of these people that walks his talk, turn it all around, mm -hmm. Mr. Positive, very strong. Awesome. And uh, and I'm really looking forward to what what uh, what he wants to talk about. So what 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 do we have him on the show talking about? We have him talking. I, I saw him like on YouTube somewhere. Yeah, how did you I, get him on the show? I loved what he was talking about. I think he he Facebooked me or something about being. I was on his show. Okay. Talking about the mindset of an entrepreneur and what an entrepreneur has to do to to be healthy and to maintain their health. And then I, I loved what he said when I saw a YouTube video of him after that talking about the classes of experience. And he's going to define that. But basically, if you're really unhealthy and you have really poor habits, how do you how do you where's the ladder to get where you want to go? Because it doesn't happen overnight. And so he's going to really define that with four different classes of experience because we're all at different places. Jarek Robbins, welcome to the program. Thank you so much for having me. It's exciting to be here. We're excited to have you, Jarek, and we're really excited to talk about the, the mindset of change so that our viewers can make permanent, lasting change. And I can't wait to hear what you have to say. You're talking to us today about the classes of experience. So what does that mean? Absolutely. It's something that I learned a long time ago from my dad in one of his courses called Leadership Academy. And he shared this with us. And, and it's really, truly understanding that when you're going to make change happen, how do you know what the right change is? And there's so many debatable ideas of, is it good for me? Um, does it help me reach my goal or outcome? But the main point that we look at with these classes of experience is not only how it affects you and your life, but how it affects the world around you. So just to give you a quick synopsis of there's there's four classes. Class one is something that feels good, is good for you, is good for others, and it serves the greater good of humanity. Okay. Um, so a simple example of this could be um, if you like to work out. For those people who love health and exercise, <laughs> um, a class one experience could be that. It feels good. It's good for them. It's good for others. And it overall serves the greater good of humanity of them doing something positive with their life and expanding their health and fitness. Um, a class two experience would be those people who don't like exercise. Um, it, it's something that doesn't feel good in the moment, but it's good for you. It's good for others, and it serves the greater good. Now, I, I don't know if you guys have ever had this experience, but it's those people who they know they should do it but they haven't done it in such a long time that when they go do it, it's not the most pleasant experience in the world. After doing it, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but after doing it for a while, they move to class one. Is that what you're saying? Absolutely, and that's the key. How to transition from class two to class one is consistency. Because what everyone learns is if you go to the gym four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 days in a row, all of a sudden you start loving going to the gym and now going not going to the gym becomes one of these later classes where it doesn't feel good anymore to avoid it. Okay. And so those top two, those are what you really want to aim for, is a class one or a class two. And ideally, work your class two experiences up to the class one feeling. And you got to put the time in to be able to do that. And uh, my favorite, one of my favorite quotes is by Shakespeare where he says, consistency is a jewel. And I couldn't agree with you more that the more you do something, the more you shift your biochemistry and it becomes something that you crave, what's good for you. So you've identified four of these yeah. classes? What's, yeah. num what's number three? Number three is something that feels good. These are vices. These are things that feel good in the moment, but they're not good for you, they're not good for others, and they don't serve the greater good. So these are the things that when you go out and do, you're satisfying your vices, you're satisfying something that's distracting you, or making you feel good in the moment, but you know it's not good for you, you know it's not good for others, and people go and do these, and many times a class three experience leads to a class four. Something that doesn't feel good, it's not for you, it's not good for you, it's not good for others, and it doesn't serve the greater good. So I'll give you an example. If you go out on a night on the town and you have a whole night of class three experiences, one lined up after the next, usually you wake up the next morning with a class four experience where it felt good all night, you knew it wasn't good for you, you knew it's got not good for anyone else, 
you wake up the next morning and now it no longer feels good and it's still not good for you or anyone else or anything else. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So you're talking drinking excessively or drugs or gambling or anything that just kind of gives you that, that quick hit. And so what happens if you, so class three takes you further down to class four. What about, what about our viewers that are in class four right now? How do they, do you know, how do they climb the ladder up back to class one? Absolutely. So the very first thing you have to do is look for things that will give you not pleasure, but things that will give you fulfillment. And what happens is people go for things that give them pleasure, meaning a quick fix, a nice high, a good moment where you feel good in the moment, but eventually it fades. No matter how pleasurable an experience can be, if it's only a quick hit, eventually you're going to need a stronger hit. It's like a drug addiction, except for it's an emotional addiction. So you need to watch your TV show one more time, or you need a scarier clip, or you need a crazier action film to watch, or you need hotter chili to eat, or whatever it is your quick fix is that gets you that natural high in the moment. Eventually it's going to go, 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 but it's never going to last. So the key is for activities that are fulfilling, something that's not only it feels good, but it lasts. Those are the types of things that will actually cause you to switch into the class two or one type category. So what do you do? I mean, what's the, what's the first advice you give someone? So you, you, you pick a sober moment and you write this down. You write down what? You're writing down what, what gives you fulfillment? How do you organize a person or give them leverage to take action? Because intellectually, most of people know what they have to do. We can't do, you know, do what we know. So how do you get to that point? Absolutely. It's a great point to start with. And the very first thing you need to do is set the foundation. What I feel the foundation is, is how you start your day. And how you start your day will absolutely determine a good portion of where it's headed. Um, two people start the day in the same way. They both wake up. You know, generally, I don't do this, but most people drink coffee of some sort or some stimulant that's going to wake them up. I, I believe in green drink and going for a walk. But most people, you know, they go for coffee. It gives them their momentary high. And all of a sudden, it drops them to a low, and then their day starts dragging. So if you want to start your day off really healthily to give you something that will last, go for a 30-minute walk. On that 30-minute walk, the first five minutes, focus on everything you're grateful and thankful for in your life. Fill your mind and body emotionally with all the things that will make you feel alive, abundant, healthy, rich from within. Now, once you've done that, the next three to five minutes – Focus on filling your mind with all the things you want to achieve in the future. So everything you're dreaming about, your, your vision for your life, what you're excited about. And what you start building is this emotional rocket fuel from within that as it builds and builds and builds, it builds natural lasting energy that will you know, hold its way all the way through your day. Now, in the beginning, you might need to refuel a couple times halfway through your day because you're not very good at it. <laughs> but once you've done this for three, four, five months every day, You'll have natural energy, emotional energy that just glides through your day. So that's a good place to start. The other thing to do is to design what I term your ideal day, which is designing the type of day that's very simplistic in nature, yet abundantly rich in emotion and meaning. And what I mean by this is pick the things that make you feel most fulfilled and align with your personal values. Um, if you don't know what your personal values are, Answer the simple question, what's most important to you in life? <laughs> now, whatever the first thing that comes out of your mouth is, whether you know we hear all kinds of nice, pleasant stuff, whether it's family or God or health or success or making a difference or love, whatever it is for you, use that value to guide how you invest the moments and hours of your day. And as you use that value to guide yourself through your day, notice what people would be there. Where would you be going? What would you be doing? What would you be learning? What would you be sharing? And design this type of day that it's not worth trading for any amount of money, any amount of fame, any amount of fortune, any amount of power on earth. Meaning if someone came to you and said, hey, I'll give you 500 million bucks, but you got to go to a place you don't like, do something you hate with people you can't stand for 15 years, $500 million. You'd go, wow, that's a really nice offer. But what if I were to die five years into it and I never get to experience that crazy reward? No, thank you. I'd rather have my ideal day life every day than settle for that, hoping someday I'll finally get to experience this big magical reward at the end. So that's the other place for them to start. One, their morning. Two, design this vision and then turn that vision into their day-to-day -day reality.
how does that how does that look practically? You know, I've worked with so many clients where they they hate their job and that affects their health, that affects their choices. They're choosing class 4 because they do just want a quick fix. And so, yes, I'm working with them on the physical and how they start their day. So I kind of work with them opposite, but but how do you deal with that if they've got a family to support and it's not as easy for them to get out of their job? Is it just through the mindset and then you give them action steps? So it's not necessarily changing the job, which is what most people think they have to do. I remember I was living in a village in Uganda. There was no running water, no electricity, no toilets. And I met this little man who was the caretaker of a local clinic, the hospital. And all he did was sweep leaves every morning. And I remember watching him and being like, oh, that's so neat. Every morning, 6 a.m., sunrise, always sweeping leaves. How great, wonderful, good for him. And he never missed every day. And I went and interviewed him, found someone who spoke the local language, and I asked him, why do you do what you do? And he said, because I believe every human being, whether it's a small baby about to enter this world or a sicker elderly person about to leave this world, deserves a clear path to do stuff. And then his face lit up like the most proud man I've ever seen on this planet. And I saw someone who did something very simple as far as an activity, yet was living so rich and fulfilled because of it because of the meaning he was associating to what he was doing. So where people are stuck in that situation, if they're stuck doing a job they don't like, a lot of times, number one, it's the meaning they associate to what they're doing. If they can find a deeper meaning in what they're doing, no matter how simple it is, it can bring great richness back to themselves emotionally. The flip side is, um, beyond just the meaning they associate to it, the other part with it is really learning how do you go about what you do? Meaning if you value love overall, do you pour that love into everything you do? Whether it's park, you know, packing boxes or emptying trash cans or building something, do you pour that value into what you do? And if you're able to align that value into your day, it's amazing how it brings life back into it. I got it now. Thank you for explaining that. It's about the why. Why are we doing what we're doing? Um, I love Simon Sinek's TED Talk where he talks about it. it's about the why and we can all have a deep, rich, meaningful experience of life regardless of external circumstances. Yeah. The other piece that's attached there is there's a big, big, big generation of people who were raised by parents who wanted to give us everything and they went through some tough times as a generation and they wanted to support us through education, they wanted to support us in learning and growing and having a head start at life per se. The only problem is it caused the mentality that exists in a younger generation today. And when I say younger, I mean people still 40s, 50s. They're still plenty young at that stage in age of life. Um, but it's a mentality that says, you know, life owes me something. I shouldn't have to work this hard or I shouldn't have to do this kind of job. I should be able to get that kind of job or I should get this kind of experience in life and I shouldn't have to deal with those things. That mentality causes people to get stuck. And it causes you know, depression, it causes frustration, it causes anxiety. And the number one thing you want to do to get out of that is, and it's a very simple phrase, but lower your expectations of what you think life owes you, because life owes you nothing. And raise your standard of what you believe you're here to give to life. So drop the expectation of thinking life owes you anything and say, listen, it's a blessing and a gift just to be alive. Now from this point, what do I have inside of me that I can pour my heart and soul into life every day with? And if I can give that to life, if that's valuable to me and I can share it with the world around me, it'll bring me to life and know that I am of meaning every day because I'm adding something that means something to the world. Love it. So do you now, uh, you've had a, a, a great role model in your, in your life, your father, very positive guy. You've obviously adopted his philosophy, this winning attitude. So do you think people have to definitely surround themselves with positive people, collect positive references? Uh, like you say, raise your standards of what's possible in your life. And, sure. and you know, because, and, and I'm going to ask you this question because I always tell Krista because I battled, I've been in and out of great shape my whole life. She's thin. I'm always jealous of thin people that, you know, it's easy for them to give late weight loss advice because they've never really had to lose a lot of weight. That's not the case with Krista, but some people, sure. that, that's my jealousy. And so with you, it's like, you seem like you've always been positive. Have you seen people that were down and out in a rut, stuck, that you've seen turned around and now they, they feel it? They adopt it. They hated exercise. Now they love it. And that momentum is going. And my next question is, you know, 
Is it kind of like a diet where if you start getting lazy, stop hanging around with positive people, filling your mind with positive things and food, you start, uh, cause I, you know, I could slowly gain 10 pounds over, over five months. Is it the same way with attitude? And then we'll wrap this up. Absolutely. I believe when you enter any stage of life and you want to make a change happen, there's three kind of main stages you go through. The first is you have to bust your tail just to get anything to happen. So when you first want to lose weight, and I started off in high school, five, five foot nine, 225 pounds, and I hated exercise. I used to be that kid in our family that we'd go on a family hike, and I'd be crying halfway up the hill and sitting on the ground making them drag me because I didn't want to go anymore. Um, it was some of the biggest arguments my father and I ever had because I used to wuss out on stuff all the time as a kid. So I was not this champion health freak that I am today. Nowadays, I do triathlons, marathons. Yeah, I saw you. I, I, I saw you one time somewhere. The first thing I asked Krista, I said, is he kind of heavy? Because the last time I saw you, I don't know where it was in an event or something, and you were a little heavy. But this was many years ago, many years ago. Yeah. When I was young, I was. Yeah, and good for you. so I had a transformation. And part of the transformation, like you said, was mentally shifting who I wanted to be and how I wanted to show up in the world, then finding the right community to hang around with. And it absolutely makes a difference. When I made all of my closest friends, people who love to work out, hit the gym every day, all of a sudden it's not normal to not go to the gym versus all my friends who used to like to eat the triple cheese, extra large pizza on our own every Friday, that's a different crew. You don't eat the pizza, now you're not part of the crew. So finding that peer group that supports the right class one experience type habits, of course it makes a difference. Um, but the biggest place you got to start there is making a solid decision of who you want to be and how you want to show up in the world, then shaping that vision around it, then finding different elements, whether it's a peer group, whether it's community, whether it's education, to support that foundation and build on what you want to create in your life. How does somebody get more involved with, with you and uh, your coaching and things that you do? Sure. Um, a couple ways. We just wrote a new book. It'll be out September 30th. So if $8 is the right amount, <laughs> it's a great way to get started. Um, it's called Live It, Achieve Success by Living with Purpose. And you can go to liveitbook.com um, is, the, is the URL. takes you right to the book. Um, or you're welcome to check out our website. We have tons of free content. We pump it out every week. We do a, a quick video that has all kinds of free gifts and content in it. Um, and that's just jerickrobbins.com. Okay, great. Uh, awesome. Krista? Derek, you've been great. Thank you. Um, I think this is going to help our viewers a lot to get out of a rut. And I, I'm hearing we start with baby steps. We start our day in a healthful way. And we also have to somehow, through the positive mindset we create, develop courage to leave familiar patterns behind so that we can then kind of stay with our new mindset. Would you say that's a decent recap? Absolutely. And there was, I forgot, I said there's only, there's three steps when you want to make change. The first is you got to work your tail off just to get momentum and get anything to work. Eventually you'll get momentum, meaning you'll be working. And it'll start to work. You'll start to see progress. Here's the key. If you stop doing anything that's got you to that progress point, if you stop doing it, you'll immediately fall back to zero. So that's a point where you're, it feels like you're working like crazy just to keep it going. Eventually what happens is if you keep doing it long enough, you'll start to see patterns and find ways to systematize some of the things you're doing and then you'll get to a place where it almost becomes effortless to do it because you'll see that class two to class one shift happen for yourself. But that notice and expect those three stages to occur in any change you want to make in your life. All right. Well, thank you, you very soon. much, by the way. Pleasure Thanks, to meet you. Derek. Pleasure to meet you as well. So what do you think? I thought it was fantastic. I thought he was fantastic too. And Energize I, this guy. And he's energized and he walks his talk and I was thinking about you guys. Like when he said, lower your expectations of what life owes you. It was very nice. That was nice, it was good. but it was, it was powerful. Powerful. And I think that it resonates with a lot of people. And I know I'm guilty of that sometimes. I do that. It's kind of like a victim thing of I work so hard, I should, you know, do this or be here. And a lot of, I know a lot of my clients do it, and all of a sudden you wipe that away and you just move forward. It's, it's a great like process. Like people feel that they're entitled to things. Right. Well, you know, my takeaway, I mean, there's so much. I mean, this guy could talk for hours mm -hmm. on end about this, mm -hmm. about, you know, uh, I mean, his topic. Mm -hmm. But I think my takeaway was that you gotta work hard at the beginning. 
it's like when you start a diet, you know, it's, there's going to be a bit of a struggle. Yeah. But once you get that momentum, the same thing with, with life. If you, whether you want to start a new business yeah. or whatever. You know, when I first started the Wellness Hour, it was miserable. It was time away from the family and this and that. And I, as he was talking, I was wondering, could I do it again at my age? Yeah. I don't know if I could do it again. But it took a lot of work. That's why I see a lot of these get rich quick uh, or, 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 or people selling kind of this multi-level marketing style of business, uh, but he's talking about working very hard. Uh, yeah, and I, you can't get, I don't think you can build anything without working really hard. And I think people see the end result of, wow, it looks like it's all successful, but what it actually took to get there was a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. And if you have that, the passion and the purpose and that drive and the why and the deeper meaning, no matter what you're doing, I think that fuels it. I mean, I know it certainly has for me. When I was at the peak of my you know, full private practice with a full team, building it online, doing the media, and it was all work all the time. And you start to think, whoa, if I didn't have such a passion for this, if I, I don't know that I could have done that. Yeah, you know what I like about what he was saying? You know, we, we talk a, a lot on the show about nutrition, mm -hmm. but he was talking about de-stressing in a way. Mm -hmm. Starting your day off, thinking about what you're grateful for. Mm -hmm. That was my takeaway today. You know, mm -hmm. it's always great to be reminded of these things. And then talking about what you want out of the day, what you want out of your life, mm -hmm. what, what's your why, mm -hmm. you know, being reminded, and also collecting, you know, this, this surrounding yourself with very positive people, like-minded people. Mm -hmm. One thing I really admire about you is that you're, like for example, you're always going to these mastermind courses. You're all, and, and from the outside, you know, very successful nutritionist, very successful online program, but you work at it. Yeah, how can you be successful if you don't work at anything and you don't care and you're the same way? You're Alvarez University and well, I, all know, these different projects. You gotta, you, it, look, there's no way that I could have maintained any competitive edge in my business if I wasn't constantly reinforcing my mind with positive information. So the three things his father says that shape people's lives are the, the, what you focus on, the meaning you place on things, mm -hmm. and then of course the actions you take yes. with those things. And it's nice to get that momentum. But I'm going to take his advice that 30 day or, or every morning to think about those things. Consistency. Maybe not listen to an audio book because that's what I do. I go to the gym and I'm listening to an audio book. Maybe I need to go mm -hmm. focus. Like he said, so what do you do? For do you do our that? next show, I liked how he said, think of everything you're grateful for when you're on a walk. I do that at night. I write my journal. I try to okay. get away from the computer and technology at night. and. Anything that you felt genuinely grateful for throughout the day, not things that you should be grateful for, things that you genuinely felt that emotion about, and then you're right, what you focus on expands. And so at the end, of, so your recipe is at the end of the day, mm -hmm. you think of what you were grateful for that day? Mm -hmm. Very nice. Yeah. And what about at the beginning of the day? At the beginning of the day, I like, you know how you talked about kind of create a desire list. How do you want the day to go? What do you want to happen? So sometimes some mornings I'll kind of write out my ideal day if I have time and you start it off with lemon water and if I have coffee I always have the lemon water before the coffee coffee with breakfast but I like his it's a simple practical thing of don't you know just jolt yourself but really kind of ease into the day and his book is coming out very soon yeah yeah liveitbook.com that's what he said and he's a powerhouse mm -hmm. this guy and and uh, you know he could have gone a lot of different directions with you know, with a, with a dad like Tony Robbins, so that says something about Tony Robbins, it does. that his son, you know, who, you know, is just seems like he's got it all together. Yeah, he's. I mean, from the time that I, I've spent with him, he's truly passionate, and he's creating a class of this type of performance coaching, all of his own, which I think is really cool. Okay, good. Yeah. Well, uh, you've been watching the Randy and Krista show. I'm Randy Alvarez. I'm Krista Recchio. This is news that makes you healthier. Thanks for being here. We'll see you next time.